This video should be going out either on Halloween or the day before Halloween. So if you're seeing this, happy Halloween or happy Halloween weekend. I got my pumpkin behind me. I got these little, I don't know if you can see some flowers. We're festive today. I have orange eyeliner on. I got funky earrings. We're vibing, we're vibing. Happy Halloween. Hey cuties and welcome back to my channel for another video. If you wanna join the cuties fam, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the little bell icon to get notified when I make new videos. All my socials will be linked down below, including my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Cameo, Patreon, Discord, my podcast, my PO box if you wanna send me anything. Any way you can support me will all be linked down below. And you know I appreciate that so much. Like every video, I wanna give a big shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. You guys have no idea how much it means to me. You keep this channel running and I love you guys so much. So I know a lot of you who are watching are probably true crime girlies. Her arms were cut off. Her legs were cut off. Her ears were cut off. Her tongue was cut off. Her nose was cut off. Her eyeballs were plucked out. Her eyebrows were then waxed. Her tongue was sliced open. Her hair was cut off. And you might not like what I have to say in this video because today we're gonna be talking about true crime and the ethics of monetizing true crime. We're gonna be talking about the new series that just came out on Netflix about Jeffrey Dahmer. And we're gonna be talking about some YouTubers who do true crime and mix it with other things like makeup or mukbangs or, ASMR. <laughs> Morbid curiosity is a real thing. And for a lot of us who suffer from mental health issues or who have been through trauma, we can actually find true crime really comforting. And it's like a familiar anxiety that helps us cope with the anxiety we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But sometimes we need to evaluate deeper and be conscious consumers and ask ourselves if what we're consuming is ethical. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about the ethics of true crime. And speaking of ethics, I think it's our ethical duty as humans on this planet to help fight the climate crisis. So before we jump into the video, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Ren. Ren is the easiest way to make a meaningful difference in the climate crisis today. They do this on their website by calculating your carbon footprint after you answer a few questions about your lifestyle. And of course, nobody's footprint can be zero. So you're able to help offset your carbon footprint by helping to fund a mix of carbon reduction projects like tree planting, mineral weathering, and rainforest protection. I personally love their initiatives that help support leading policy groups because as us political junkies know, the most most important changes happen at the top through policy and legislation. I hope that the climate crisis is as important to you as it is to me. As many of you know, I live here in Canada and Canada is warming faster than the world as a whole. It's warming at more than twice the global rate and our Canadian Arctic is warming at three times the global rate. So the climate crisis is really, really badly impacting us here in Canada. This is no easy job and it's gonna take a lot to end the climate crisis, but you can start helping today by learning more and offsetting your carbon footprint at ren.co. The first 100 people to sign up using the link in my description will have an extra 10 trees planted in their name, which I think is absolutely amazing. So please go click the link in my description below to sign up now. Let's work together to help end the climate crisis now. Let's jump into the video. Like I was saying before, a lot of us have had true crime phases in our life or have been interested in true crime. I know growing up, I really liked true crime. I remember watching all of the like true crime Dr. Phil episodes where he would deal with like murderers and stuff like that. I always found those so interesting. And of course I loved shows like, this isn't true crime, but I loved shows like Criminal Minds and stuff like that. Like learning about those kind of issues. And I remember realizing that it was affecting me and I was seeing a psychiatrist at the time in high school and she was like, she literally prescribed to me that I stop watching Dr. Phil and Criminal Minds because it was causing me so much stress and anxiety and paranoia um, that it was affecting my mental health. So she actually was like, you need to stop watching this. 
Now, not only does true crime and and shows like that affect our mental health and our well-being, we also have to ask ourselves, is it ethical to be consuming this type of content? Now, of course, not all true crime is bad. A lot of true crime was specifically made for educational purposes so that history doesn't repeat itself or so you can learn more about the victims, their families, and what they went through. True crime can also help with cold cases, um, giving people new information about cold cases or missing persons, and it can be really helpful in a lot of senses. But a lot of true crime can be incredibly exploitative and it can be monetizing other people's tragedy without giving anything to the victims who actually suffered through these tragedies. Now, I think the original true crime that I used to watch was Forensic Files. That was super popular and it dealt with more smaller cases and it would really go through the forensic aspect of how they would catch people and how they were able to use it in legal proceedings in court and so on. I found that had more of a educational spin on it. It was really dealing with these cases and showing you how forensically they were able to catch the killer or the perpetrator. And if you're interested in legal proceedings, if you're interested in the forensic side of things, I think that was really interesting and was able to give you that different perspective on how these people were caught. But again, a lot of people just watched it for morbid curiosity or to get their true crime fix. And obviously we see on Netflix the cornucopia of true crime series. There's extremely wicked, shockingly evil and vile, the Ted Bundy tapes, the John Wayne Gacy tapes, the Jeffrey Dahmer tapes, Making a Murderer, Night Stalker, American Murder, The Family Next Door, and of course, the new one that was just released called Dahmer, Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story. And although Netflix is probably the biggest place that is platforming true crime, we also see a lot of true crime being platformed on YouTube. True crime really started to explode over the last decade, and especially on YouTube over the past, I would say, three to four years, it's gotten really big. And more and more creators have been shifting their content to kind of stuff they like to do, plus true crime, because they know it's such a hot topic and it's very easily monetizable. There's people like Bailey Sarian, or Sarian, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, um, who do makeup and true crime which I, I could not imagine having something super tragic happening to me or someone I loved and having it turned into a, a quick smoky eye tutorial plus my tragic life story. Like that would just be so upsetting. But even worse than that, there's true crime ASMR. And even worse than that, because I could not imagine having a loved one go through something so tragic and have it turned into a mukbang. Stephanie Sue does um, true crime mukbangs and she talks about very serious subjects and very gory, tragic, and gruesome events while eating food and you hear the mouth noises and it's just, it's, it's really not, it's really not okay. During my research for this video, I was looking at the reasons people might want to watch makeup and true crime or ASMR true crime or mukbang true crime because I didn't really understand the appeal of it. I'd rather watch a documentary that's incredibly factual, that did the research, that had interviews with real people and real victims and talked to the families. And, you know, I'd rather watch a documentary on these things or something real and, and backed by fact than some random YouTuber who just probably did some research online and is telling me the story while eating a McDonald's Happy Meal. No, thank you. So I was, while researching this video, I was, I was trying to figure out why people enjoy watching these things and why they're so popular on YouTube. A lot of people said they liked watching these videos on YouTube because it made the gruesome and gory events of these tragedies more palatable and easy to consume. And I think there's a problem in and of itself with that. True crime should not be easy to consume. It shouldn't be cushioned or softened to make you feel more comfortable. These are real people with real stories and real tragedies. Like I could not imagine being one of the victims who got like eaten by Jeffrey Dahmer and some person turned my tragic story into a mukbang. 
just eating their noodles while telling the story of how I got absolutely eaten by a human being. No thank you. But the problem is, is the more true crime you watch, the more desensitized you become to these things. And that's where the disconnect is happening. You no longer see these victims as real people who went through real gruesome, gory, tragic events. You see them as characters in a story for your entertainment. And these aren't just stories. These are real events that happened. Now, obviously, I think there is a time and a place for true crime, for educational purposes, so history doesn't repeat itself, for more understanding on forensics or legal proceedings that happened, like trials and, you know, stuff having to do with lawyers and court uh, proceedings and et cetera, et cetera. And also for cold cases to help get new information. But when you're looking at these things like reenactments like the Jeffrey Dahmer series that just came out, or you're looking at things like these YouTubers who are doing beauty videos and mukbang videos and ASMR videos, and they're monetizing off of these real life tragedies and these real life victims, you kind of start to realize how sickening it is. Some of these creators are even selling merch where the proceeds go 100% to themselves, not to the victims, not to the families, not to any sort of resource to help any of these causes. There's merch that says like, my favorite murderer, or you can get merch that says like, what would Jeffrey Dahmer do in a picture of Jeffrey Dahmer, or like, I'm a murderino, or a true crime this, true crime that, and it's just monetizing off of real people's tragedies. I could not imagine having myself or a loved one go through something like that. And there's some piece of shit in Ohio fucking wearing a sweater with my killer on it. Mm. I would come back just to haunt you. I'm telling you that right now. I would come back and haunt your ass. But not only that, but we see the impact of things like the Jeffrey Dahmer series, which we'll get into in just a second. Now, there are some true crime um, YouTubers who do actually do things right. Kendall Ray is a YouTuber who does true crime and her newer content is actually really awesome. She posts a lot about cold cases or actively missing people. And she actually connects with the family, lets the family and loved ones of the victim tell the story and participate in her video as much as possible. And all the video proceeds go to the family to help find their missing loved one or help solve the case. And a lot of the cases are people of color. And she also gives her merch proceeds, I think, to the victim's families and stuff like that. Now, obviously she's done true crime as other people have done in the past, but I think she's moving her content more towards helping cold cases, connecting with families and loved ones of missing people and victims, and trying to figure out, you know, if we can get more information, if she can get this out there and have their stories be heard, and donating her proceeds to the families to help with the difficult time and help with the horrific events that they had to endure. And I think that's really amazing, and I think that's where true crime should be going. I think that's how true crime should be. It should either be for educational purposes or it should be to help people. And my thing is when you're purely using true crime for entertainment, I think that's where the issue comes in. Someone else's tragedy should not be your entertainment. Now we'll move on to talking about the new Jeffrey Dahmer series. Okay, so I will admit I did watch the whole thing to be able to do my commentary on this, which I guess just adds to the problem. But I mean, it's already number one trending, so I don't think my one view of everything really did much. Now, there are a lot of true crime reenactments that are out there on many different cases. I think that the best, most educational true crime comes from documentaries and not from reenactments, because a lot of the times reenactments are able to... <laughs> are able to not tell the full story or tweak the story so it's more spectacular or entertaining for the viewers. Oh, sweetie, I love you. Here, the real stories, there's actually documentaries out there on Jeffrey Dahmer that are for educational purposes. And they interview, you know, his family, they interview the families of the victims, and those documentaries actually had the consent of the victims' families and also gave proceeds to the victims' families, you know, and there's actually good documentaries out there who 
do try to help and do try to get awareness out there. Because of course, you don't want the same mistakes happening that happened in these cases. You don't want history to repeat itself. You want people to be educated and knowledgeable. You also want people to be educated on how they can protect themselves and et cetera, et cetera. And there are proper documentaries that do that, but reenactments where you're playing with the story and you're making it more entertaining, it's clearly just for entertainment purposes. I watched the Jeffrey Dahmer series and don't get me wrong, I think it was incredibly well done. To me, acting is really important and the acting was phenomenal. Evan Peters is obviously an amazing actor and all of the actors actually in the series were incredible. Like they had the characters down to a T, like even Evan Peters had the accent and like the vocal patterns of Jeffrey Dahmer. Like I've seen interviews with Jeffrey Dahmer and it is identical. Like when you hear him speak, you're like almost like creeped out. You're like, that's, that's Jeffrey Dahmer's voice. And it's, it's very creepy. I think, you know, obviously the acting, the characters were really well done. The storyline actually left a lot to the imagination, which I'm really surprised a lot of the time reenactments want to go for that scary horror gore. And they really left out any sort of gruesome, gory parts. I mean, there were some in a, a few episodes that I think went a little too far, but I think they were trying to at least pay as much respect to the victims as they could and the victims' families to not show the really, really awful things that Jeffrey Dahmer did. I was really surprised about that. And I thought it was, you know, for as much as it could be respectful to the victims and their families. I think it was also great that they took the angle of focusing on the victims and their stories, but also focusing on the missteps of everyone around Jeffrey and how Jeffrey Dahmer's demeanor and whiteness really allowed him so much wiggle room in order to not get caught. Now, I had only seen like a little bit on Jeffrey Dahmer before this series, and I actually didn't realize how much homophobia and racism played a key role in him not getting caught. And I was surprised at actually how much this series ex exemplified that. I also like how they put an emphasis on his neighbor, Glenda, whom I would consider a victim of his, even though she wasn't actually physically harmed. She was mentally harmed and was a victim of being the neighbor to someone this horrific. And she likely endured a lot of underrated trauma from being his neighbor. And I'm sure she often gets left out or kind of skipped by really quickly when telling Jeffrey Dahmer's story. So uh, I found it very interesting how they put a real emphasis on her and showed her character a lot more. Now, of course, since this series has been put out, you may think, well, you know, it was for entertainment purposes, who cares, whatever, but we're already seeing the impact of this series being put out. Now, every time I go on TikTok, there's someone doing a dance to that song by, is it is it Kesha? That's like, eat your heart out like Jeffrey Dahmer. People doing dances to that, people using the audio from the series where he's like, I just wanna take a picture. People are using the audios from it and making jokes, doing dances, um, and just making really inappropriate comments on something that was a real tragedy. And I couldn't imagine being the families of the victims of Jeffrey Dahmer and, going online and, and seeing that stuff. It's re-traumatizing. And even they have said how re-traumatizing it's been. A cousin of Errol Lindsay, one of Jennifer Dahmer's victims, uh, condemned the new Netflix miniseries, uh, saying the show has re-traumatized his family. He said, I'm not telling anyone what to watch. I know true crime media is huge right now, but if you're actually curious about the victims, my family are pissed about this show. It's re-traumatizing over and over again. And for what? How many movies, shows, documentaries do we need? And then Lindsay's cousin, Eric Perry, tweeted about the 10-part series. Perry also claimed that his family wasn't notified about the series, tweeting, Netflix don't notify families when they do this. It's all public record, so they don't have to notify or pay anyone. My family found out when everyone else did. And then Lindsay's sister, Rhoda Isabel, who was depicted in the series, expressed similar sentiments when talking to Insider about what it was like to see herself portrayed. Isabel said Netflix didn't reach out to her about the show and she wishes some of the profits would have gone to the victim's children. It felt like reliving it all over again. It brought back all the emotions I was feeling back then, Isabel said. And I'm pretty sure that was the woman who was in the court 
giving the impact statement who started screaming and running at Jeffrey Dahmer. And I can only imagine watching, like being that person and watching that be depicted and like refeeling all of those emotions and how devastated you were. And, you know, imagine not being even notified that the series was being made. So uh, I also think they put a big emphasis at kind of the end of the show about how a memorial was never made for the victims in Milwaukee. That they, I think, said that they were going to make a memorial and then to this day have never made a memorial for the victims. And it would have been nice since Netflix, while making this series, put such an emphasis on that that they said that some of the money that they made from the show was going to go towards a memorial. Like how amazing would it be had they used some of the money from the series to either help the victim's families, help the children of the victim's family, or even donate to, you know, missing persons uh, initiatives or some sort of fund that helps families of victims who have been through tragedies like this. Or at the very least, since you talked about the memorial so much, maybe help fund a memorial in Milwaukee for the victims of this tragedy so that their families would have something that's they are memorializing their loved ones. I think I've talked a lot so far. I have one last thing to say, and that's on what I think is ethical treatment of true crime. I think there is an ethic I think there is an ethical duty when covering topics of this magnitude. And I think that there should be a list of things you kind of need to hit in order for it to be ethical content. Now, I think A, you should wait a significant period of time before creating the content. Now, if it's a cold case, obviously that's a different story. You want to kind of get it as, you know, once it's gone cold, you want to be able to get the story out there, see if you can get more information, et cetera, et cetera. But when you have uh, something as big as the Jeffrey Dahmer case, um, you want to at least wait enough time that the dust has settled, that people have you know, begun to heal so it's not as hard and traumatizing to rehear the stories or to talk about them. You want to do it in a way that causes the least harm to the victims of said tragedy. So doing a documentary or a reenactment or something like that right after a tragedy happens is probably not the best idea because that's going to harm the victims and their families. Okay, B, pay tribute to the victims memorialize, emphasize the humanity of these people. These were real people with real lives and real families and people who loved them and cared about them. Humanizing them, showing that they are real people who suffered and memorializing them and showing what kind of people they were, why they deserve to be remembered. I think that's incredibly important when telling stories like this, having families express how much they loved them, um, what kind of person they were to them, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's also really important to, you know, have the families either participate in the documentary or docu-series or whatever in some way or another, whether that be in the production, whether that be with interviews, whether that be notifying them and letting them know about the production or in some way funding or compensating them for doing a story on their loved one. You can either you know, give some of the proceeds to the families of the victims or create a fund that helps people who have gone through similar atrocities or help to do something to memorialize the victims. And I think C, minimize the glamorization of the killer. Either treat the reenactment or the documentary with respect and only show necessary parts as to respect the victims and their families. Don't add to the spectacle. Don't glamorize the killer. Keep the story as true to the actual story as possible. If you're adding things like that for entertainment purposes, you are not being ethical with your content. Now, I think those are the three steps to making ethical true crime. And a lot of reenactments, a lot of these YouTubers are not falling under that ethical content making. And a lot of us are consuming content of tragedies for entertainment purposes because it fills our true crime needs or it helps our anxiety. Now, I don't think you're a bad person if you consume true crime. Hell, I was a true crime junkie for a while. And I don't think you're a bad person for being into true crime. I know a lot of people with mental health issues and trauma enjoy true crime. And it's not our fault. It helps with anxiety. It helps to uh, better understand and cope with our own traumas. And 
it's totally understandable, but you just want to reevaluate and make sure that you're consuming ethical content, that you're not turning it into an entertainment spectacle, that you're doing it for, you know, education purposes, or you want to learn more about trial proceedings or forensics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And I think there are ethical ways to consume true crime, but I think we do need to look within ourselves and reevaluate what you're consuming because imagine this happened to you or one of your loved ones you wouldn't feel so great about someone using your story for entertainment or glamorizing it or even being a fan of the killer like imagine someone saying that they were oh my favorite killer was this guy and it was someone who killed a loved one of yours I would go feral. Anyways, I hope I didn't miss anything in this video. I think that's all I have to say. Just be more of a conscious consumer. I think that's just my main point here is just be conscious of what you are consuming online. That's, I think, all I have for this video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below because you know I appreciate that so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.